Good morning, everyone. It's Tess, and today is tip 198. And we know, coming from my background, uh, things that come up for me a lot are like uh, accounting terms and business stuff like that. And today I thought I was going to kind of talk about um, what kept, um, I walk every morning, and uh, what kind of kept coming through my mind is uh, like, what is the cost of obesity when I was walking this morning? And when I came back, I started, I looked up articles on the real cost of avoidance. And then when I started looking up articles, of course it pulled up business articles because that's kind of where I tend to go all the time, all the time. But it kind of <coughs> explained from a business perspective, the idea of avoidance versus savings and how like in financial statements, we want to identify the difference between costs that are avoided or cost savings that we're identifying. And it kind of, I, I wanted to put a spin on it, looking at it as a weight loss journey or as our health journey, as our life journey. And um, kind of just in a brief summary, um, do we know the difference between cost savings and cost avoidance? It said that even in the accounting field, many people are unclear on what that means. And what they're more or less saying is that cost savings measures are, are items that you're already, already paying that you're trying to look for ways to reduce so like um if you uh if you were unable to walk and you had one of those roundabout um wheelchair type things or motorized wheelchairs you know things that you already have that you have to have in order to have an everyday day um the idea of cost savings is what could you do so that you don't have those expenses anymore then the other thing they were talking about is cost avoidance. So how do we never get to the point where we need some, where we need to spend money on certain things? And I guess I thought like from the weight loss journey, this was really kind of important and telling in that I was trying to figure out like, what does, obe what does obesity cost me in, um, you know, like medical bills or food or all these other items? And, and when, when these articles kept coming up, it's that idea of avoidance versus savings. So no matter where you are in your journey, we have to decide, are we, would we rather save our money to put into adventures or do we want to spend our money in these expenses that are related to obesity? And I guess I was kind of trying to look at it so that it would help keep me motivated and on track because I know so many people struggle with um, a commitment to the journey and moving forward. And I'm always looking for ways to keep my mind active and keep my mind engaged in the journey because I know it's a forever journey and it's a journey that I have to visit every day because food is just one of those things we need. So kind of what I did is since anything that I have an expense related to it now, I have to identify and where can I save money um, maybe even for me, part of savings will be that I have my own garden. Um, what foods can I make from home so I don't have restaurant expense? Uh, you know, by being healthier and not going up in clothing size, I won't have the expense of additional clothing. Um, will my shoes last longer because I'm not as heavy? You know, those are those are some expenses that we can kind of look at. The cost avoidance part of it is what can I make sure doesn't happen? Make sure that I'm not. On, good morning, John. Make sure that I'm not on insulin. You know, uh, insulin is a costly medical expense. Sometimes insurance covers it, but a lot of us are facing these high deductible savings, which I know because I have one, where you end up paying out about three grand or more if you're a family per year before your insurance even kicks in. So I thought, well, we know that it's either one or the other. We're either going to avoid the cost altogether by getting healthy, by eating right, by working on the mindset so that we can plow forward and use all of our money for adventures, for our homes, for making our lives more fun and exciting. If we don't find a way to avoid it, then we're gonna to have to be trying to find ways to save money, which is more or less getting back to the healthy journey so that we don't have to spend money on these things. And kind of, I kind of started going through lists trying to figure out what are the expenses related. Hi, Rachel. What are some of the expenses that maybe we just start paying and we don't even recognize that are part of our journey? And they were saying that like um, obesity, the costs related with obesity include body pains and, you know, like 
Um, as we get older, everyone has the aspartame and their asper cream, asper cream, and they're trying to find ways, you know, to get the non-smelly stuff, but you're going to need that sooner if your joints are overtaxed because of your weight. There's, there's the body pains, there's the apnea, um, there's high death rates. Uh, they say 50% of the people over 45 live with some form of diet-related health issue. And these things include diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, gallbladder problems, um, liver. Even those of us with the weight loss surgery you know that they watch our gallbladder very close after surgery because the rapid weight loss can cause problems with the, the um, gallbladder. We also know that pre-surgery, we have what they call a fatty liver, so we have to go through these extreme diets so that our liver's not so big so that when they do surgery, they have more room inside to work on it. Again, I'm not medical. These are just all things I've experienced through my journey. But it started making me think about, you know, what, what are the costs of being obese? There's a lack of mobility. There's... Um, mental health because we don't feel like we're worth anything. We don't go for the jobs that we're really qualified to do. We don't believe in ourselves. We don't go on the trips. We spend the money on new medical gadgets, on new uh, robo machines, on medicines, on medical bills, on um, additional foods, foods that we think make us feel good, but and then in turn turns around and puts us into a sugar stupor. So. I just, I guess it, it, it seems like maybe more of a harsh thing today, but maybe I was trying to be harsh to myself in that remembering why this is so important to me. Um, with 50% of the people order over 45 dealing with some medical condition related to obesity, I just don't want to be one of those. And for those that really want to fight it, I don't want you to be one either. So I think that um, if you can move forward and find ways to help yourself by the diet, the exercise, the groups, the um, getting a little more active, you can find a way to, to avoid the medical costs that are associated with being overweight. And if we can avoid it, that's a whole lot better than to be stuck in the middle of all those expenses, trying to find a way to save money on the expenses. Because what they're saying is that by the year 2030, $66 billion a year will be spent related to uh, weight issues and obesity. And that's just not an area that I want, and not for anyone else. Now that I'm living, now that I'm living in a place where um, I'm finding more energy, I'm finding more excitement, I'm living more adventures, I want to remember the pain. I want to remember the pain of being on the other side of it, of being at a BMI of 60, so that I can stay on this journey and continue to improve every day. Because every pound I lose, every step I take, every healthy food I've eaten has made me feel stronger, better, and healthier. And that's my goal for you, is I wanna see you get stronger, healthier, and better every single day. Thank you so much and have a beautiful, beautiful day. And remember, at all costs, if we can avoid the expense, let's save that money and go on some amazing adventure together. Thank you and have a beautiful day.